Welcome into the video. I'm your tech guy, Wayne, and today I'm gonna to walk you through how to use the Samsung Galaxy A35 for beginners. This is gonna be a full beginner's walkthrough. I'm gonna go over all the exterior buttons, all the interior, how to navigate the phone to find out where everything is. We're gonna talk about how to download applications, how to set up your email. We're gonna talk about how to take pictures and videos, how to send text messages, how to make phone calls, how to make the text size larger so it's easier to read. Um, so make sure you watch the video all the way to the end so you don't miss any important information. I also do a quick run through of the apps as well so you can understand what are the primary apps you use for different things. So once again, watch the video all the way to the end so you don't miss any important information. And um, if there's something I don't cover in the video that you want to learn, make sure you drop it in the comment section down below and I will make a part two of this video and I will loop in some of the other questions that you have, all right? Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna just turn the screen off first and let's take a look at the exterior of the phone. So um, there's no buttons on the left side of the phone. On the right side of the phone, you will find a few buttons. You'll find your volume button, so volume up, volume down, and this is your power button, but it's also your standby button as well. So um, when you tap that button, it's gonna wake up the screen. Tap it again, it's gonna put the phone to sleep. Now, when the phone is asleep, guess what? It's still on, so tapping the button just simply wakes it up. This is gonna be the, the bottom of the phone here, and this is where you charge the phone. Um, this charging type is called a type C charging type. That's type C So if you ever need to purchase a new charger, you need to look for a type C charger now in the box It will come with a type C cable and I would encourage you um, To purchase one of these chargers right here. This is uh, an anchor wall charger and with this uh, you can plug in the charger from the box and uh, that cable will plug here and it'll plug right there. You also have an extra port here to plug in your other devices as well. So you'll definitely need to purchase an extra uh, charging block so that the cable in the box can plug into in order for you to charge the phone. Now, this port also is where you'll plug in headphones. Now, what you'll notice is there is no auxiliary port. It doesn't have that little small 3.5 adapter, but there is an adapter you plug into here that will give you that 3.5 adapter so you can plug in your old headphones or you can purchase type C headphones. So those are the options that are available. So don't be discouraged if you don't see that headphone jack because you may just need to invest in a new pair of headphones, a new pair of type C headphones that will just plug directly into this. I'll link a couple of those adapters on screen and in the description as well so you'll know where you can get them and kind of the price range. At the top of the phone, you will find your SIM card tray, and this is where you can plug in uh, a SD card if you want to expand the storage further. And uh, I'll link to a video right here where I actually talk about how to put in this uh, SIM card here and also um, how to configure the settings for that if you already have a memory card. Okay, now let's move into how to actually get into the phone. Now, what you're gonna do is take your finger, put it on the screen, and just drag your finger up the screen like this. Finger on screen and just drag up, and that's how you unlock the phone. Now, right now, we don't have a passcode on the phone, and so you just put your finger on the screen and you drag up. When you do put a password on it, when you drag up the screen, it's gonna ask you to put in a code first before you can get into the phone. Now I'll go over how to put a, a code on the phone a little bit later on in the video, so stay tuned for that. Now, let's simply talk about how to navigate the screen. Now first, the screen we're on now is called the home screen. And so your home screen is where you'll find most of these little icons here. Now, these are called apps. Uh, apps is short for application. Think of, like, think of like a computer, computers have programs, phones have applications or apps for short. So when I refer to apps, I'm referring to these little icons or these little programs, okay? Now you can swipe left and right and you can have multiple screens of these little applications. And if you want to find the rest of the apps that are on the phone, you simply, you drag your finger up the screen and this takes you to what is called your app drawer. This is where you'll find all the apps that are on the phone, and there are multiple pages. 
You also have these, which are called folders, and these folders will have more apps in them. This is a Samsung folder. This is the Google folder. So um, just know that there are more apps that are kind of held in these little folders, okay? Now, in terms of navigating the phone, the main thing you need to know is these three buttons at the bottom of the screen here. The Home button, the Recent Apps button, and the Back button. Let's start with the Home button. The Home button basically um, always takes you back to the home screen. Pretty simple. No matter what you're doing, that home button will take you back to this screen. So if I go to this app, which is your web browser, this is Google Chrome. If I go to my Google Chrome web browser, and let's say I go to ESPN because I'm trying to look up something sports related, I'm looking at this website here, and now I'm all done, and I want to go back to the home screen, I'm going to tap on the home button, just like that. So no matter what you're doing, this button gets you back to this screen, okay? Now, okay, next we have the Recent Apps button, which is right here. Now what this does is uh, every time you open one of these little uh, apps and you go back to the home screen, that application is still running in the background. And if I want to see what applications are running in the background of the phone, I'm going to tap on my Recent Apps button like this. Oh look, I was just on ESPN and look, now I'm back here and I can actually go right back here and continue to read. See? So this button just makes it easy for you to get back to any application you were using previously. Now you might say, I'm done with ESPN. I don't want to look at that anymore. Well, I can drag up on that, on that page and then now it's closed. Now Google Chrome is not open. And I can drag up on this page as well. And now that is also closed. So this um, button here takes you to recent apps, but also allows you to close your running applications. Okay, to the right here, we have our back button. This always takes you back one step. Let me explain what that means. Um, I'm going to swipe up to get to my apps. And I'm going to go to the settings. And let's say I'm in the settings and I go to location. Now, oh, I tapped on location. This is not what I'm looking for. I want to go back one page. I'm going to use my back button. It's going to take me back one page. And now I'm back on the main screen. Let me try to go to device care. Oh, now that I'm here, this is not what I was looking for. Let me hit my back button. And you see, all this does, it just takes you back one step, okay? Oh, let me try software and install. Oh, that also was not what I was looking for. Let me hit my back button. So you just use it to go back one page or one step. Now, we're on the main page of the settings app. And if I tap the back button again, it's just going to take me out of this page altogether. So it just takes you right out of it. So that's what the back button does in short. So those are the three buttons you'll use to do most of your navigating. We also went over swiping up and getting to your apps. Now, this only works when you're on the home page. So if I'm on the home page and I swipe up, it'll take me to my app drawer. However, if I'm in the internet, if I'm on my Chrome browser, swiping up is not going to do that. It only works when I'm on the home screen. Okay. Now you have one other section that is called your notification panel. Now you take your finger and you're gonna start at the top of the screen and swipe down. And this is gonna show you basically all your notifications. Now notifications are um, the different uh, programs or different apps are trying to tell you, just update you on information. So for example, I have a T-Mobile app and they're trying to send me an update about my account. Um, I have an email address already signed in on the phone and it's showing me, hey, I have new emails. Oh, when I see this icon, it means I have a new email. I can tap on this and it'll actually take me to my email app and then I can look and see what new emails I have. So this basically notification panel just lets you see all the different notifications that are coming through your phone. And you might see something that you're not interested in. Uh, Chiefs announce anthem singer. I'm not really interested in that. So I'm going to just swipe to the right. And that's how I get rid of that notification. 
And, oh, Chief's fined for something. Okay, I don't care. Swiping to the right. If you care about it, tap on it. If you don't, swipe to the right, and that's how you close it out. Now, what you'll also find in this notification panel are switches, these little shortcuts to some of the most frequently used settings on the phone. For example, this is your Wi-Fi icon. And whenever this is lit up white, it means that your Wi-Fi is turned on. Okay. Now, if I tap this, right, I've just turned off the Wi-Fi. Now we can see the icon is grayed out. I want to turn it back on. I'm simply going to tap on it. Now, if I hold down on it for one second, it'll take me to this menu and this will allow me to connect to a new Wi-Fi network. Now, the first time you buy the phone, guess what? The phone will not be linked to your home Wi-Fi. You will have to connect it uh, by following this process. So we're here and let's say, um, so you, you can swipe through to see more Wi-Fi accounts. It's not just these three, you know, just simply swipe up with your finger. Maybe I wanna connect to um, this network here. I'm gonna tap on it. And when you tap on it, it's gonna ask you to enter a password. So you obviously need to have your password handy for your internet. Now, if you're using AT&T or Spectrum or even Verizon, normally if you just go right to the box, behind the box, it'll have the name of the network and the password. So you can go look there to get your information. And then you just start entering whatever that code is. Could be numbers and letters, and you're entering that password. Now, if you wanna see what you've put in so far, tap on this little uh, I, and this will show you exactly what you put in. If you enter the right, Wi-Fi password, um, it will allow you to connect. Okay, I could hit the connect button and then it should connect to that network. But guess what? I didn't put the right code in. I just put in a random set of numbers. So it's gonna come back and say, oh, that code is wrong. So um, you'll wanna make sure you have your Wi-Fi information handy before you do this. Now, I'm gonna use my back button to get out of this. And now I'm back on my Wi-Fi screen. Keep in mind as well, you can follow these same steps if you're at a coffee shop and you want to connect to their Wi-Fi as well. You can simply go through and find the name of the network. Say, oh, excuse me, can you give me your Wi-Fi password and the Wi-Fi name? They'll give it to you. You'll tap on it, type in the password, and then you'll be able to connect with your phone. Okay. Now, I'm going to swipe down again and just show you. Uh, so that's our Wi-Fi icon. This is our Bluetooth icon. If you want to connect to a Bluetooth speaker or, another, or a Bluetooth device, you'll want to simply tap on this or press and hold for one second. It'll bring up that same menu and allow you to find whatever your Bluetooth device is to connect to it. Remember with Bluetooth devices, you do need to first make sure it is in the pairing mode so it is set up and ready to send a signal to connect. Now, there are um, a lot of other things you'll find up here. This is the other uh, switch that's really important. This is your volume switch. So if you want to put your phone on vibrate, you'll need to tap on this icon. And when you see a slash over the button or over the little icon, that means you're on vibrate. Now I'm going to tap it again. If it ever looks grayed out, that means that you're now your phone is on silent. So your phone won't vibrate, it won't ring, nothing. Now if you want to turn the sound back on, tap the button again and it'll make a noise and you'll see a speaker and this is how you know your sound is totally on, okay? You have some other cool things here like your airplane mode, you have your flashlight. If you turn this on, it'll use your camera flash as a flashlight, very convenient. And if I swipe down further, it'll actually bring up even more options here. Mm -hmm. So for example, this is my uh, GPS option. Um, this is my mobile hotspot, my power saving mode, do not disturb. You can also swipe to your left and you'll have even more options here as well. So when you get some time, go through this here and look at all the different shortcuts that you have in that settings. Now. Here's a really cool tip. So when I swipe down the first time, you're just gonna see a settings wheel in the upper right corner. But if I swipe down again, it will show a power button. And when you tap on this power button, 
it now will bring up your power options that will allow you to turn off the phone if you want to just turn it off uh, a restart button to restart the phone you'll have an emergency call button if there's an emergency right and you'll be able to also load in your medical information in the event of an emergency all right so there's a lot that is housed in this menu but i mainly just went over just the just the basic things, the most important things you need to know to start. The last thing is, this is your brightness meter, and you can use this to uh, lower or raise the brightness of your phone. If your phone is too bright, you can simply manually control this and go up and down. Now, um, most folks will turn on the adaptive brightness, and then the phone will adjust the brightness according to how bright the room that you're in is. So I do encourage you to turn this on. I don't have it on because I'm filming a, a video and I have a lot of lights that are around the table here so that the brightness is much higher than it normally would be, so FYI. Okay, so that was just a quick walkthrough of the notification panel, all right? Now, quick reminder, if you found the video helpful so far, make sure you bump that like button down below. Now it's time for us to go over apps. We're gonna go over how to download these little uh, apps or applications. Uh, maybe there's a game that you'd like to put on your phone. Maybe you need Uber because you need to get around. I'm gonna show you where to find those and how to download applications. You're gonna to go to this icon, which is called the Play Store. The Play Store is simply where all the apps are found. Now, when you tapped on that Play Store button, or icon, if it didn't take you to this screen, it might mean that you have not signed into a Google or Gmail account yet. Understand you do have to have a Google account signed in on the phone or it won't let you download any applications, all right? So if your screen, uh, if you're on a white screen that says sign to your Google account, then you'll need to either Sign to your Google account if you already have one, or you should see at the bottom of the screen a button that says create account. Tap on the create account button and follow the prompts to create your own Gmail. It takes less than two minutes, it's free, and it will give you access to the store for you to be able to download applications. All right, once all that is done, you should be on this screen, and let's talk about how to navigate the store. So there's a lot that is in the store. There's over a million apps that are at your fingertips to download. So the way the app is organized is at the bottom of the screen, there are uh, tabs. So there's a game tab. There's a general apps tab. There is an offers tab where Google will run different promotions. And there's a book tab. You can also purchase books in this section as well. Now, I normally stay on the apps tab. And if you don't know what you want to download, you just want to see what apps are available, this is where you want to be in the app section. And you can scroll through the suggested apps section here. I'm just swiping up and down the screen. Or you can tap on top charts and they will show you these are the highest trending apps that are being downloaded. So these are the most popular apps right now. You can look at um, different categories and you can see, oh, these are apps for art, these are apps for business, these are apps for food, yada, yada, yada. So you can search by categories instead. Now, for most people, they know what they want to download. So you want to tap on the search button right in the center here, and it will bring up a search box at the top of the screen. You can either tap in the search box, which will bring up a keyboard and allow you to then type in what you want to search for, or you can tap on the microphone and you can simply just say the name of the app that you want and it will search it for you. For example, Uber. So quick search for Uber and here's the Uber app right here. Now this is an ad, this says sponsored, that's why this came up first, but this is the app that we're searching for, Uber. Now notice, this button here says install. That tells us that this is a free app, okay? Now, sometimes you'll search for an app and this button will not say install, it will have a price. If it has a price, it means the app is not free and you do need to pay for it. 
Now, luckily, Uber is a free app to download. So we're going to just tap on that blue install button. And we see this little circle turning, and that's telling us that it's downloading the app right now to the phone. So, yay, you're about to download your first app to the phone. You're a rock star. Good job. Now, while that's downloading, I'm going to go to the search, and I'm going to download one more app. I just want to find a Sudoku app. I'm going to tap on the microphone. Sudoku. Now, this might be trickier because there are lots of Sudoku apps. So now you have to figure out what app do I want to download? There's so many. Well, let's tap on this one here. So remember, this says sponsored, which means that they're paying for this to be first in the search. So I always jump past whatever is sponsored and go right to the first option underneath. So this is a Sudoku app. I can actually scroll through. I can look at pictures and actually see exactly what the app looks like and decide, do I like how this app looks? Do I think I want to get this one? Um, maybe, okay, I'm gonna use my back button, back button again, and let's try, maybe this Sudoku looks different. Let's look at this one, and I can scroll through and see what that app looks like. So, this is a great practice. If you're not really sure what, which one you want, there's multiple options. You can look through and look at the pictures and see what app if there is there one that you like how the app is laid out. This is actually the Sudoku app that I use, so I'd recommend this one FYI. And if we're ready to, to download it, we're just gonna tap on the install button, and just that easy, it's downloading to our phone. This is also a good solitaire game as well, in case you're in the solitaire. Let's download that one too. Okay, let's hit the home button. Now, we just downloaded three different apps to the phone. Where did they go? Let's find them. Swipe up on the home screen to our app drawer. Every single app on the phone is gonna be in this section. Now, guess what? I don't see Uber. I don't see Sudoku. Where are the apps that we downloaded? Well, remember, there are multiple pages of apps. So if it's not on this page, just simply swipe to your left. And oh look, here's Uber, here's Sudoku, and here is Solitaire. So all your apps are gonna just load on the next page. And now, if we're ready to go into Uber and try to get our first ride going, I'm just gonna tap on the Uber app, and now it's gonna open up and start telling me what we need to do to set up Uber. So that, in a nutshell, is the process to download an app and how to find apps and, and how to use the store. Next, let's talk about how to make calls and how to answer the phone when someone calls you. So. Let's start with when someone calls you, what it looks like and how to answer the phone. Okay, so I'm gonna initiate a call from another phone. Here we go. So this is what it looks like when a call comes through. And if you wanna answer it, put your finger on the green phone button and you'll wanna drag up. That's how you answer a call. You can also put the call on speaker by tapping on this button to do speakerphone. You can switch to your Bluetooth device by tapping this, mute the call here, or when you're all done with the call and you're ready to hang up, tap on the red button and hang up. Now, I know it's not the most intuitive thing, so it'll take a bit of getting used to, but again, the same way you put your finger on the screen and drag up to like unlock the phone is the same thing you, you do with answering a call. Now, that call, let's say you don't want to answer it. You have two options. By the way, this sounds really loud, I know. If I tap any of the volume buttons, it will silence the call so it won't make a noise. And if I want to decline the call, I can put my finger on this button and drag up, or I can swipe up from the bottom of the screen like this, and I can send them a message, and I can say, hey, please text me. That will decline the call, it won't answer it, and it will send them a message saying, hey, please text me. So um, I would encourage you guys, that's a much easier way of declining a call than pressing the red button and dragging up. Just swipe up from the bottom and select one of the three options of 
send them a message saying, sorry, I can't talk right now. Now also, there's one other thing you need to know in terms of answering the phone. So right now I'm on the home screen and a call came through and that's why the call looked the way it did. But if I was in an app and I was looking at something or doing something and a call comes through, it's gonna look a little different. So here's how it's gonna look if you're in an app doing something. So notice it's only gonna show up as a pop-up and this is actually much easier to answer the phone when it shows up this way because you either tap on the green button to answer or you tap on the red button to decline. So it's much easier to answer or decline it if you're already doing something and the call shows up as a pop-up. Those are the two ways that calls will come through the phone. If you want to make a call, you're going to tap on the phone button in the bottom left corner, the green phone button and you'll simply need to enter a phone number starting with the area code. So I'm gonna make a call to this number and I'm gonna tap on the phone button and that's gonna initiate the call. There we go. And when you're all done, hit the red button to end the call. Another option that you have for making a call so you don't have to type in the number every time is you can go to recent. When you go to recent, it'll show you any calls that you've made recently, right? Makes sense. And you can simply drag your finger to the right on any of the contacts that you see and it will call them. So watch this. I wanna call Jim Jones. I'm going to swipe to the right over his name, just like this and it's gonna automatically call him. Now let's talk about how to send text messages. Now right next to your phone app, you'll have a text messaging app. Tap on that app, and this is where all your messages will come in, and also where you will send messages. Let's start with how to send a message. In the bottom right corner, you will tap on this icon to start a new message, and the first thing you'll need to put in is who you're sending the message to. So you can either put in the phone number of the person or if the person is already saved in your contacts, you can simply type their name. I'm gonna just type in the phone number, 323. All right, so what you'll notice is I've typed in the phone number and a contact came up because this number is actually already saved into my phone. So I can either hit done or I can tap on the contact right here and have it load up there. Now you can continue to add more contacts and turn it into a group message by simply typing in another phone number. And you can continue to add contacts as many, uh, I wanna say uh, 10 or 15, you can add in to make a group message. Uh, once you've finished adding all your contacts, you're gonna hit the done button in the bottom right corner. And now you'll enter your message here. So I can either say, hi, how are you? And I can hit this button to send off the message or I can tap on this button to add an emoji. Maybe you wanna add uh, a smiley face, you can do that. And if you hit the drop down button here, um, all your options will go away. You'll have your message and then you can hit this button to send it. Now, if you wanna add a picture to your message, you'll tap on this arrow here and you'll have some icons. This first icon is to add a picture you've already taken or that's already on the phone. The second icon is if you wanna take a picture of something right now, this will bring up your camera, allow you to take a picture and then it will add it right to the message. Or you can hit the plus as the third option and you have these other uh, things you can attach to your message. You can attach your location. Maybe you're uh, at an event and you are trying to show someone exactly where you are. If you tap location, it will add your location to the message, you can send that. Um, you can add a video, audio, add a contact, add a calendar invite, you can add a voice recording message. You have all these different options. Now, the most common option that most folks will use is adding an image. You can also add a picture here. So tap here, and then it will bring up 
different pictures that are already on your phone. Let's say you want to attach uh, this picture. So because we tapped it, it automatically added it to our message. And now what's going to be sent is, hi, how are you? The emoji. And we can hit this to send off our message. Now, another cool option is to send someone a voice recording. I can record a message right now by holding down on this button here. If I hold that button, it's going to start recording a message. You know, instead of you typing good morning, you can just say, hey, good morning. I hope you have a great day. Let go of the button. And it's going to attach an audio recording to the message. And I can tap this button to play it first before I send it like this. Turn the volume up. You know, instead of you typing good morning, you can just say, hey, good morning. I hope now, you might listen to the message and say, ah, I'd rather not send that. No problem. Tap on the red X and that'll get rid of that voice message. But that's a really cool option you have to send messages. You can also use what is called voice to text. You're going to tap on the microphone in the bottom left corner and then you can talk and it will basically write down everything you say into the message like this. Well, first, uh, the first time you press it, it will ask you to give the phone permission for the microphone to record your voice. So we're going to tap while using the app. And now, as I talk, it's going to load in everything I say into the message. So you can send a nice long message. Hey, I hope you have a great day. Happy Monday. When you're done, simply tap on the microphone again. So it'll stop recording. And now your whole message was typed out for you without you having to enter anything. And always go back in and proofread it because sometimes it will mix up the words. So you just want to make sure it's exactly how you want it to, to read. And then hit that button to send it off. And there you go. So that's how you send a voice message or how you send a text and different things you can do uh, within sending a message. Now, we're going to use our back button here to go back to the main screen. We're on the main screen. And let me show you what it will look like when someone sends you a message. So I just got a text message in. It's going to show up as a pop-up first. And in the app here, you'll see a little red number next to the message. So this is a new voice message. So if I want to read the whole message, I'm going to tap on that contact and I can see that, oh, someone sent me a message and it says hi. If I want to reply, I'm going to tap in the box here and tapping in the box will bring up the keyboard. I can type my message and then once I type my message, I can hit that button to send it back. So that's a, a brief overview of how to send and how to read text messages. Let's move on to how to take pictures and where those pictures go when you take them. So swipe up on the home screen and here is your camera icon. Now I would tell you, let's move that camera icon to our home screen so it's easier to get to it. Take your finger and just hold down on the camera button for one second. And if you just hold and don't do anything, it'll take it right to the home screen for you and then you can just move it where you want it and then just let go. So now our camera uh, app will always be on the home screen. I can tap on that. And now I can tee up taking a picture here. And let's just take a picture of this little thing on the corner here. So quick, quick overview of just the camera uh, menu. So a photo is taking a picture. You just tap the little shutter button to take a picture and you can zoom in and out using these numbers here. So if I tap on the two, it's going to zoom in. If I tap on 0.5, it's going to zoom out further. So that's all these buttons are. They're just the zoom options. To the right is the video button. I can tap on video if I want to record a video. And uh, there's also a voice command that you can say if you're in the camera and you say record video, it will actually start recording a video just on the voice command, which is pretty cool. So let me just show you that one more time. 
record video. So just that easy, it'll start recording a video just on the voice command. And just to show you when you're taking a video, if you tap on the shutter button here, you can take pictures of what you're recording all during. If you want to turn on the flashlight when you're taking a video because maybe it's kind of dark, you tap on this button here and then now your flash will come on while the video is playing and it'll give you some extra light. There's two ways to look at the video that you've taken or the pictures after you've taken them. So when you're in the camera itself, tapping on the little circle to the left will take you right to the last thing that you recorded. So we just recorded a video and now it took us right to our gallery and we can look at that video that we took. Okay. Now, if you really like that video and you want to save it as a, uh, a favorite, tap on the heart right here and that'll save it as a favorite. And right now our video doesn't have any audio because we're muted. So if we tap here, it'll Let's unmute. Right and then now your flash will come on. And there's our audio. Okay. So you can use this to mute or unmute the video as well. Now that's the first way to look at a picture you've taken. The second way is this. You'll need to go to your gallery, which uh, right now mine is in the bottom right corner. And this is where we can see all the pictures and videos that we've taken. And if you go to pictures to the far left, it will sort all your pictures by date. So this is everything that we've taken today, everything we took, you know, in previous days. So this is an easy way to just find important pictures. You can also go to albums and it will have the pictures separated uh, by category. So recent pictures or videos, favorites, um, screenshots, you can go to the, the appropriate album and then look at those pictures. If you want to delete a picture, let's go into camera. Let's go to that video that we took. And you might say, oh, this video is kind of crappy. Why would I want to save that? Let's delete it. You'll tap on the trash can right here and that will delete that picture. Now, if you wanted to send it to someone, you can tap on this share button here and then it will tee it up so you can send it as an, uh, a, an email or you can send it as a text message as well. So that's a brief rundown of the camera, uh, mainly pictures and videos. Uh, again, video setting, photo setting. Now, if you want to jump to the front camera, you'll tap on this button and this will switch from the rear camera to your front camera. And you'll notice that some of the options are different if you're on the front camera versus the rear. So you'll just want to be mindful of that. If you want to turn on the flash for a picture, you're going to uh, tap on the flash button here and change it from off to either auto or always on. And what's cool when you take a picture or a selfie using the front camera, if your flash is on, it uses the screen as a light and it will flash when you take the picture to give you more light, just like this. Let's try it now. See that? It's using the screen as extra light so that your selfie will look better. I normally keep the flash off. The phone does a really good job of, of trying to take in as much light as it can. So only use the flash if it's really, really dark and you really need it. All right. So again, that's a quick rundown of how to take pictures and where to find the pictures after you've taken them. Let's talk about now how to make the text size larger on the screen. You might say, oh, you know, the words are just a little too small. I'd love it if things were just a little bit bigger. Well, let me show you how to do that. We're going to swipe up on the home screen, go to our settings. You'll want to go to display. And from there, go to font, size, and style. Here, the first thing you'll want to do is simply drag this little dot to the right. And here, this will show you what the text size will look like as you're moving it over. The bigger we get, it's gonna adjust the size of everything on the phone. Notice all the settings um, labels are even larger. And you wanna be careful, if you get too big, then the phone will look really jumbled. Um, so probably here, this is a really good default 
if you just need things to be bigger. You can then tap on the font size and sometimes using a different uh, font style helps as well. And you can also make things bold if you need them to pop even more. So now if I hit the home button, you'll notice my camera button is, or camera label is much larger. If I go to the internet as well, so you'll say, hey, well the internet, everything looks the same size. Why didn't this get bigger? Well, if you're on a web page or a text message, you need to do a pinch to make things bigger. So two fingers, put them on the screen and just pinch out like this. So that's how if you really need to zoom in to see something better, you can do that. And then you just pinch it back in when you need to shrink it back to normal size. Also, again, works on text messages. Your text messages already are going to look larger. So you can see right here, the words are already much bigger because we made that setting change. But you can also pinch even more to get it even larger. So play with this until you find uh, a good size that allows you to read everything on screen. Now I'm going to use my recent apps button, right? Because I want to go back to the settings. I'm going to swipe over. Here's my settings. I can jump right back to where we were, where we were making the adjustments in terms of the size of everything. All right. Next, how to set up a password so you can secure your phone and protect your information. And also how to set up a fingerprint reader so you can unlock your phone using your fingerprint. We're gonna go back to the settings, swipe up on the home screen, tap on the settings wheel, and we're gonna hit the back button to get out of display. And we need to go to our security and privacy section. We're gonna tap on lock screen, and then tap on screen lock. And this will allow us to set a password to protect the phone. So you'll have to put a code in before you get into the phone. Now I normally like to do either a pin or a pattern. Those are my two favorite options that are pretty easy to remember. Let's do a pin and we're gonna make it uh, six digits. So if we just made it one, two, three, four, five, six, and hit continue. Now, unfortunately, I just realized that's too simple. We can't make that the password. Um, they're going to want you. See, you you can make it that, but they're they're advising against it. This pin is too easy to guess. You should change it. You can hit use anyway, but I would encourage you to make it a little bit stronger. So maybe you want to make it one 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 one, or zero 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 zero. Hit continue. They're still saying it's too easy, but we're going to roll with that. Hit use anyway. Enter it again. You want to make it something that only you would know versus something that someone could just fumble around and, and stumble into. Okay. Now we're going to hit done. So we now have a password. And let me show you what that looks like. So let's turn, put the phone asleep and wake up the phone. Now, if I want to get into the phone, what I taught you previously is putting your finger on the screen. And also, I don't know if you notice this, sometime when the screen goes dim like this, if I tap the screen twice, it'll actually wake up the screen. So just FYI, that's a double tap to wake up this, the phone. So I'm gonna put my finger on the screen and just drag up. And notice it doesn't take us into the phone anymore. It now is gonna ask us to put in a pin before we can move forward. And our pin was 0000000. 000 000 000 000. And now we're back in the phone. So we've set up our screen lock, which is great. Now we want to set up our fingerprints. Uh, to do this, we do need to put in our pin code, our six digit. We're going to hit continue, hit register. Now the fingerprint sensor is actually in the screen. So you're going to take your finger and place it over the circle here. And we're just going to lift and press, lift and press. And you're trying to slightly move your, your finger every time you do this because it, it needs to learn your fingerprint. I would actually say the best way to program this is actually to hold the phone kind of in the normal way you would hold it. 
So that way, when you go to unlock your phone, you're not doing anything that is out of the ordinary. Now I'm just lifting and pressing, and I'm trying to slightly move my, my thumb each time so it can learn my finger. There you go. Now, if you want to add another finger as a backup, which I, I strongly recommend, you should do this. Put the phone in your other hand and hit add and add another fingerprint. This is because if one of your hands is wet or greasy or whatever, you can't use that hand to unlock the phone when it has something on it. So you'll want to program a finger on both hands so that you have a backup in case one hand has something on it. For the sake of the video, I'm not going to do it right now, but that's what I encourage you to do. Let's hit done. And now I put the phone to sleep. I double tap to wake up the phone and put my fingerprint right on the screen here. Oh, wrong hand. That's funny. Okay. All right. Now we're going to just put our finger over the fingerprint icon. And just that easy, it'll unlock the phone for you. So that is how you program the fingerprint sensor to be able to unlock. And if you ever have an issue where the phone just will not unlock using your fingerprint, no problem. You simply can use that pin code as the backup. Next, let's talk about how to set up email on your phone. Now, you're going to go to the Gmail app. Now, some of you might say, I don't have a Gmail. I have a Yahoo. I have an AOL. I have a different email type. Well, the Gmail app actually lets you sign into different email types. So I'm already signed into an email account right now. So I simply just need to go to the upper right corner, tap on this icon, and then go to add another account. And then it'll, I'll get a list of all the options that are available for signing into email. Uh, for some of you that didn't have a Google account signed in already, this might be the first thing you saw when you went to the Gmail app. Okay, so if you're signing into a Gmail account, obviously just tap on Google and it'll take you to a page where you'll put in your email address and password. If you have a Yahoo, tap on Yahoo, right? But if you have another email type that you don't see on screen, here is a, uh, a quick tip on how to still sign into that email account. We're going to hit our home button. We're going to go to the Play Store. And we're going to go, so we're right on this solitaire app we downloaded earlier. We're just going to use the back button, back button, tap on search. And at the top, tap where it says search apps and games. Now, in the bottom left corner, you'll tap on this um, icon that has the exclamation point, the hashtag, and the one. We want to tap on the at symbol. And all you're going to enter is at and whatever your email account ends with. So, for example, if I'm doing an AOL, I'm going to put an at. And then let's tap on the A here. And then AOL.com. Okay. For you, um, if it's an SBC Global, if it is an at Verizon.net, whatever it is, just type in the at symbol and the end of your email address. Hit the search button in the bottom right corner. And the uh, Play Store is going to now recommend apps that are compatible with that email type. So cool, you have an AOL? Perfect. Use the AOL app. Let's tap the install button. And I can use this app to sign into my AOL account. And then I can check my emails. I can send emails all using that app. All right. So that is just a little trick on how to find apps that are compatible with your email type. Let's hit the home button. I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of how the Gmail app works. Most of the email apps work the same or very similar. So this tutorial should help with even the other apps that you'll use. So this is the inbox of my Gmail. And I can see I have all these different emails here. Now, you simply tap on email if you want to read it. I can swipe through. Now, when you're finished reading the email, you can delete it by tapping the trash can at the top. You can archive it, which takes it out of the inbox, but it doesn't delete the email. Or you can tap on this button, which will make the email still show up as a new email, even though you've already read it. I will normally make an email 
new if I want to go read it later. Maybe there's something important. But if there's not, if I'm done with it, I'm going to hit the trash can just to delete it. Now, there's a couple of emails in here that are not important and I don't care to open. So I can tap on the little icon to the left of the email, this little G, and that's going to select it. And I can select, this is a quick way to delete multiple emails at one time. I'm selecting these four emails that I don't care to read because they're just junk mail. And I'm going to hit the trash can at the top to delete those emails. So that's how you delete multiple emails at one time. You can also swipe left on an email. This will archive it so the email is not totally deleted. It just moves it to your archived folder. I will normally archive an email that uh, I may want to search to look at later, um, which is not that many. But if it's something that you think you might want to reference later, archive it. If you think you'll never look at it again, delete it, get rid of it. All right. Now, if you want to write an email to someone, in the bottom right corner, you'll see a button that says Compose. Tap on Compose. It will now set up a brand new email ready for you to send. So in the To section, it'll start you here. You'll want to put in who the email is for. I'm going to put in just wayne at gmail.com, which uh, is not my email, but just for, the, for reference. And then hit next. I can go to the subject line, just tap in the subject line. I'm going to say hi. And in the compose email, I'm going to say hi there. That's my email. If you're ready to send it in the upper right corner, click on this little arrow that's pointing to the right. It looks like a paper airplane. This will send the email off to that person. Now, if you want to attach a picture to that email, You'll tap on the paper clip to the left right here, and this will allow you to attach a file from your phone. If you want to attach a picture you've just taken, you can simply, it'll show you any recent pictures you've taken here, or you can go to the gallery, and this is where the rest of your pictures are going to be saved, where you can select a picture, hit done, and now I'm going to hit that send button and I'm going to send off that email. So that's how easy it is to send an email from your phone. All right. Now this brings us to the end of our video. I hope you guys found this helpful. I tried to be very thorough and cover everything that I thought a new user would need to know if this is your first time with this phone. So um, definitely hit that like button down below if the video was helpful. Leave me a comment down below as well and let me know uh, if it was helpful and also if there's anything else that you would like for me to cover. I will make a part two of this video and I want to make that relatively soon. So I'll be reading through the comments to look for any other things you want me to cover. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, make sure you subscribe as well so you don't miss it when I put out the part two of this video. Um, thanks again for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.